So what is Unicode? Well, it's a mysterious and wonderful thing that sometimes catches new programmers by surprise. It can sometimes cause frustration and weird bugs, but not for you because we're gonna talk about it. Welcome back everybody. Today we are talking about text and characters and strings, which is beginner stuff, right? It's pretty basic, very straightforward until it's not. And that often happens when we are trying to represent text from a variety of different languages, because there are so many different languages that we can pick from, that people write in, and that we might want to represent text in. Now this is definitely a topic that's going to take more than one video. I'm going to have to break this up, but today I wanted to just take a moment to introduce Unicode, help you kind of see why this this matters. If you like this and other videos that I'm making, please do help support the channel. For example, on Patreon, where you can get access to my monthly office hours and access to all source code. But now let's jump into the code. Okay, today we're working in C, but this really isn't a C thing, it's a text thing. So it's relevant in pretty much any language that you're using. But yes, today we're starting with this simple program, and all I'm gonna do here is I just wanna go through and print out my arguments. So let's just make a little for loop and go up to argc. And all I'm gonna do here is just print out each of the members of my argv array. So, but I am going to, rather than just to print f, I'm gonna make a function called print arg because I wanna print out the argument and I wanna print out some things about it, like the raw bytes and uh, the length of it and things like that. So let's pass it in like this. That's great. And then if we come up here, let's just implement our print arg function pass in a single argument. And then I'm going to have a couple different printf statements. So the first is gonna get kind of the beginning of the line. We'll get the end of the line here. And then I want the raw bytes in the middle. So those are gonna be in parentheses. So let's add, let's do that. And so we're just going to print out arg and then a string, the actual argument itself. I'm gonna have a tab character so things line up hopefully reasonably well. And then percent %l u, that's a long unsigned, so that's gonna be the length of our string. Another tab character, and then we'll have our uh, raw hex bytes. So let's do that here really quick. And we'll just go up to the length of our string. Okay, so this is gonna go through byte by byte in our string and in our argument, and we're just going to have it print out that particular value in hex. So this is, we're not looking at the character or the symbol itself, we're looking at the value, the numerical value of the bytes in the character array. So for this, we'll just do percent zero two x. That's gonna print each byte in hex, and it's gonna guarantee that I have two digits or two hexits. And then let's just pass in arg, the ith byte in arg, and then we will come in here and let's cast this to something unsigned. So like uint eight underscore t, so that if I get anything that's negative, it doesn't give me weird like sign extension stuff. So this will just keep everything unsigned. I could have used unsigned char here as well. That's perfectly legitimate. It's fine either way. Okay, so hopefully what I'm doing here is pretty straightforward. I'm just pr printing out my arguments that are passed in and some additional information like the length and the raw bytes. Also note that I have a make file over here. I have a bunch of videos on make if you haven't seen make before, but this is just going to compile the program. So we can come in here and say make and oops, I forgot. Yes. Um, so I forgot I need to pass in my my actual arguments here. So arg and then string length arg. Yeah, just those two, I think. Yep. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, so that, so this will now I'm getting ahead of myself. So this compiles my program. And now once we have it compiled, then we can run it like this. We can say something like example, thank you for watching. So you can see that it's printing out each of our arguments and the bytes that represent each character as well as the number of bytes. So you can see that so far we have one byte per character. That's the assumption that we typically make when we are new programmers just getting started. So for example, for the argument thank, that is five letters here, we get five bytes 
and you can see their values right here. And you see that for each of the arguments that are passed into the program. So there's three for you, three for four, and eight for watching. Okay, now when I started out programming, this was typically always the case for everything I ever worked with because back then, all of our text was encoded as ASCII, or using the ASCII encoding. ASCII stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It was an attempt to make a standard encoding that would allow different computers to be able to communicate using a standard agreed upon numerical representation. And of course, ASCII uses one byte per character. And that was all fine and good as long as you stuck with English or some other language that shares English's character set. But what if I wanted to store text in another language? Or maybe I want to use, I want to include emojis in my text. So for example, let's come down here and let's run this again. But instead, let's add, like let's come in here and add an emoji. And let's also type something in a different language. I'm just going to use the letter GA from the, it's the first letter in the Cambodian alphabet. And so this is perfectly fine. If I run this, well, you're gonna see that things get a little interesting, right? Notice that for our emoji right here, we have, it's four bytes long. And for our ga, we have three bytes. So what's going on? Well, we simply have too many characters in the world to fit in eight bits, because that would limit us to 256 unique characters. If we get rid of one for the null character, then that leaves us with 255 characters or symbols that we could represent, and that's simply not going to be enough. So as a result, most of our machines are not using ASCII anymore, at least not just ASCII. We have to use encodings that allow us to go beyond just 255 symbols. So what is my machine using right now? Let's find out really quick. And uh, we could just check in the terminal, but let's do it in our program. So let's make a character pointer. I'm gonna call it Lang. What I'm gonna do here is I am going to call get env to read an environment variable. It's called Lang. On my machine, that is going to tell me what my language and character encoding is. And then we can just print it out. And so percent %s like this. And let's print out our lang there. Okay. So if we come down here and compile and then run this again, you can see that my lang environment variable, also, by the way, if you haven't seen environment variables before, I have posted videos on those. So I'll link down in the description, you can check those out. They're really simple, it's just variables that help define your computing environment that your program is running in. So this one specifies what my language is, and so you can see it's saying English, specifically US English, and the encoding it's using is UTF-8. Now, I am probably going to need another video to explain the UTF encoding scheme, but it's one of the encoding schemes that can represent all the characters in the Unicode standard. It's also probably the most common text encoding scheme used on Earth right now. But so what is Unicode? That is the question we started out with, and it's really nothing crazy. It is simply an agreed upon numbering system for every character in every language written or at least typed on Earth. And it also includes emojis, because where would we be without those? At least that's the goal. Now there may be missing languages or a missing symbol here and there, but it is pretty complete. It's impressively complete. For example, here, if we're looking at, so you can go to www.unicode.org to pretty much see everything that it has to offer. If we come down here and look for our GA that we printed out, come down here to Kamai, and if I click on that, that's gonna bring up the chart for the Khmer alphabet. So if we look at the chart, here you have it, you basically can see the GA right here. This is the one that we just typed and it has a numerical value of 1780, that is in hex. Notice that we have like A, B, C, D, E, F over here. So that's in hexadecimal. If you're really brand new and you're not familiar with hexadecimal, check out, I have a video that explains why programmers like hexadecimal so much. But the big thing is that this value, the, you know, values like 1780, that's not gonna fit in a single byte. You're gonna need some more bits and so we have a variety of encodings, including UTF-8 and UTF-16, and we have things called like wide character data types and things like that, that allow us to represent these larger values in our programs. Uh, like I said before, UTF-8 is probably the most common in use right now. It's become sort of the default for the World Wide Web. Let me know down in the comments if you do wanna see deeper dives into these encoding schemes and you know how do we handle Unicode characters in future videos. But now, when you hear people talk about Unicode or Unicode characters, now you know what they're talking about. That's really it. It's really just a numbering system. It's a standard numbering system so that all of our machines can talk to other machines in different languages and not get confused because nobody likes confusion. So I hope you learned something new. I hope that helps you in a future project and I'll see you in the next one.